Ezekiel chapter 2. The Lord said to me, Ezekiel, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been revolted against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, and whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns are all around you, and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of what they say, or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious house. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then I looked, and I saw a hand stretched out to me. In it was a scroll, which was unscrolled, unrolled before me. On both sides of it were written words of lament and mourning and woe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome this morning to Christ Church Purley. My name's Carl Knightley. I'm one of the members of the church here. And this morning we're going to be looking at the book of Ezekiel. And today in Ezekiel, we're going to be reflecting uh, through chapter 2 in what God had to say to Ezekiel. And as I've prepared, I've realised that preparing to do a talk is one thing, but doing it staring at a webcam is another. So if I do look down more than I'd like to, you have to bear with me if that's OK. Um, before we start, um, let me just pray. Lord God, help us to reflect on what you have to say and please equip me by your Holy Spirit, as I unpack your passage. Amen. Before we start, wherever you're watching this, if you don't have your Bibles with you, maybe just press pause and go and grab your Bibles if you'd like to, and that way you can follow as I go through the passage. As we helicopter into the book of Ezekiel, what do we need to know before we start? Well, Ezekiel was born in Judah and was preparing to be a priest when the Babylonians attacked in 597 BC and carried him and 10,000 others off into exile. Five years later, God calls Ezekiel to be a prophet, to be a messenger for him. And that's where we pick up the story at the beginning of the book of Ezekiel. Context is important. So when you get a minute, do take some time to read through chapter one. It's quite something, the visual magnificence of God's angels and then the glory of God himself. And two things that stand out for me are that the hand of the Lord was on Ezekiel. And secondly, that when Ezekiel sees a vision of God, he falls on his face. I think I might have said this before, but when I was younger at school, I often remember picking up a book and flicking right to the end to see what happened before starting. Now, that's generally not very sensible when reading a story, but I want to make an exception today and briefly take us to chapter three. In Ezekiel chapter 2, which we'll be looking at today, we see God appearing to Ezekiel in a vision, and God gives Ezekiel instructions, encouragement, and lastly spiritual food. And Ezekiel does eat this spiritual food, as we see in verses 1 to 3 of chapter 3, which says this, And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you, eat this scroll, then go and speak to the people of Israel, so I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat this scroll I am giving you, and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. What Ezekiel ate tasted good, as sweet as honey. So with that in mind, let's head back to chapter 2, and see what we think. And as we do, I have two questions for us as we journey through this chapter. Firstly, what does God say to Ezekiel? And secondly, what does it mean for us? As we head back to the beginning of chapter 2, we find Ezekiel on his face on the floor, trembling and awestruck. 
as he's hearing from God. But that isn't where God leaves him. God tells him to get up and the Holy Spirit helps him stand up to attention. And God addresses him as son of man. This is important as it reminds us there's a clear difference. God is God and man is man, not the other way around. And that's important and we'll come back to that later. And the use of the name son of man is interesting. Ezekiel is a son of man. He's the man of the hour, chosen, spirit-filled and delegated by God. But he's also just a human, weak, sinful and fallible. We know the Lord Jesus calls himself the Son of Man, all capital letters, whilst pointing to his own humanity. But that's different from the countless times in the Bible we hear the word Son of Man, which just means man. The difference is that Jesus is the Son of Man. He is the epitome of humanity. Jesus is the sinless one, humanity perfected, the one to finally reconcile God and man. But back to the passage. What does God say to Ezekiel? Well, I want to focus on three areas. Firstly, God says to Ezekiel, speak my words. Do you see that in verse 7? And God explains what he means earlier on in the chapter. He wants Ezekiel to go to the Israelites and speak on his behalf to them. Because they are, and indeed their ancestors were, rebelling against God. And they are obstinate and stubborn, as we see in verse 4. God gave Ezekiel the difficult responsibility of presenting his message to a terrifying and rebellious people. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like much fun. What's interesting, though, is that God isn't measuring success based on how well the Israelites listen and respond, although I'm sure God would like them to change their ways. But the important thing is that Ezekiel is obedient to God and fulfils God's purposes for him. See verse 5. Irrespective of the outcome, God says they will know a prophet has been among them. God won't judge us on how successful we are, but on how faithful we've been. Now I don't know about you, but if I was Ezekiel, I would have probably been more like Jonah and legged it in the other direction. I wouldn't have been jumping for joy at the task at hand. And yet that's God's calling on Ezekiel's life at that point. And Ezekiel needs to listen, because the God of the universe is talking. So God tells Ezekiel what to say, but he also tells Ezekiel not to be afraid. If you look down at verse 6, God says do not be afraid three times, which is significant. It will be tough out there for Ezekiel. It's tough out there for us as well sometimes, in a society where being a Christian means at worst persecution, and at best being made to feel rather uncomfortable sometimes. There's no sugarcoating what God is asking of Ezekiel. He's asking Ezekiel to be God's messenger, his messenger, whatever happens, come what may, which means it's time for courage. God wants us to share his good news, whether it's convenient or not. But we don't need to be afraid because God is with us and he speaks directly to Ezekiel. God tells him to open up his mouth and eat what I give you. What this means is that God wants to give his message, his words to Ezekiel that Ezekiel would consume them fully and be nourished by God's word and be nourished by knowing that he was serving God and fulfilling God's plans on his life. Now, in case you're wondering, the reason verse 10 looks about, talks about lament and mourning and woe is because the words God is giving Ezekiel for the Israelites involve wrath and judgment against a wicked and rebellious people if they don't turn from their ways. And if you read on through Ezekiel another time, You'll find it rather sobering reading, although it does end up well. And some of what you read might make you feel uncomfortable or unsettled. But as I mentioned earlier, it's important to remember that we're created beings and God is God, our loving yet supreme ruler and creator and Lord of all. You might even think that it doesn't feel like it tastes like honey when we read. But we do know that God's love is always good news. And when we're obedient to him, we're li living our lives as he created us to. So God has given Ezekiel instructions to tell, to not be afraid and to eat. But what does it mean for all of us today? Well, in the same way that God stretched out his hand and gave Ezekiel a scroll to eat in verse 9, God wants us today to consume his word 
and we have the wonderful benefit of having it all in one place in his holy bible and knowing god speaks to us directly through his word which the holy spirit brings to life for us well that's amazing what a privilege i never cease to be amazed when i read god's word which when we eat it and pay heed to it tastes as sweet as honey now at this point you might be thinking okay carl this all sounds rather weird i don't eat my bible i eat my dinner stay with me think of the world and all the actions behaviors and characteristics in terms of food and then think about whether it's good food if it's things let's go for extreme things for example violent tv pornography racism music that doesn't glorify god whatever it might be well let's think of behaviors that we might absorb by just being in the world narcissism lying selfishness idolatry the list is endless but what do we get when we consume god's word the fruit of the spirit a love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness and self-control and gentleness many of us will be aware of that phrase you are what you eat that is as true for spiritual food as it is for physical food so how do we eat well well as we saw earlier we need to open our mouths that may seem obvious but it's fairly crucial and we need to chew and digest how can we chew and digest scripture that's for us to reflect on in our hearts i could certainly do with spending more time with my bible chewing over what god has to say and reflecting and when we do eat good food we aren't hungry again for a while and most importantly we're strengthened and nourished and of course taking holy communion in church is an outward reminder of consuming god's word as we eat and drink in remembrance of jesus dying for us and that's why in amongst those words in communion we're invited to feed on him in our hearts with thanksgiving i know we aren't doing much going out these days but how do you find going out on an empty stomach it's not much fun for me i get hungry very quickly and then need to snack on something on the go which invariably isn't as good as the healthier hearty breakfast i would have had at home something i need to spend more time on is spending time with the lord before i start my day having that breakfast as it were filling up spiritually at the beginning of the day starting the day being quiet with god reading his word praying listening well that changes my outlook on the day being reminded of God's goodness right at the beginning. Let me read us two verses from 1 Corinthians 3, which says this. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are indeed still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. Now I just want to pause and say this isn't guilt trip time. You didn't tune in today to feel bad. This isn't about legalism or box ticking. This is about a life changing appetite though. God has so much for us. The best way I can describe it is that when our children were babies and they'd be sat in their high chairs, we'd be trying to feed them some sort of mush on a spoon, which didn't always look great, but which was nutritious, filling and good for them. They would often be resistant, or not keen on more than a couple of spoonfuls. And yet as a loving parent, I really wanted them to eat. And I knew how good it was for them. How much more does God want his people to eat well, to grow, and to go and tell others about the good news of Jesus? Because those who don't know, those who haven't heard, well maybe they don't realise they're hungry. They may not even be hungry, but they need this food the good news of Jesus Christ. Whether we're believers or not, we all need to know how much God loves us and wants to be in relationship with us. God calls us, his people, all throughout the Bible, to go and spread the life-changing news of Jesus Christ. And sometimes telling of God's love is easy, and sometimes, perhaps more and more, it's difficult, like it was for Ezekiel when God called him to speak. But we are still called. God hasn't changed. And if anything, as every day goes by, the task becomes more urgent. The good news, though, is that God always gives us the strength to accomplish what he asks us to do.
We might feel that we're overwhelmed by God's holiness. We should be. Or maybe we're overwhelmed by what he calls us to do. But I love what American 20th century preacher John Vernon McGee says when he said this. If God has called you to do a certain thing, he'll give you the power to do it. The best position you can come to is to recognise that you are not able in your own strength to do the job the Lord has given you. I often use the analogy of a car. God has put us in the car and we can drive it, but he ensures the car has petrol in it. That car drives because of him. It's our job to steer as he navigates. Bring us back to the beginning of Ezekiel chapter 2 as we finish. We see that when God wants to speak to Ezekiel, the Holy Spirit raises Ezekiel back to his feet. And God promises us free food, the best food, his word, to nourish and grow us, food that tastes as sweet as honey. This food is found in our Bibles, which the Holy Spirit brings to life as we seek out what God has for us. We just have to decide whether we're hungry. Let me pray as we finish. Loving Father God, Lord of all, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you created us. And we thank you that in a world that feels increasingly broken, you know what's best for us. Help us to eat well, to consume your word, and to grow according to your plans for us. Amen.